watched the series so far, you should go back to episode one and catch up because otherwise you won't know exactly what's going on. Um, but basically this is my DRZ 400 SM and I'm doing some restoration work to it. And when I ended part three, I was like, oh, the next video, you know, it's just take that off, take this off, bish bash bosh, it's gonna be completely apart. Well, of course I've been more realistic about it and looked at it and been like, no, it's a bit more than that. Um, so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna get to labeling up what's where on the bike with some you know some tape and some labels uh, and then i'll be peeling some pieces off but the first thing i want to do is talk about one of these little bolt kits so as you know on the bike what i've been doing is taking the original fasteners out and putting them back in their original holes to keep track of them and there's been a few that i've had to cut heads in um flat heads to get them out because they've been seized so i was like well i need to replace those bolts so i had a look online for bolts and then discovered they sold bolt kits like this. I bought this, this isn't a sponsored thing or anything, I bought this from eBay, I think it was about £17 and it claims to have every bolt you'll ever need for your DRZ. Well let's find out because there's a couple in here that I particularly want. Um, you know most of them I could just reuse if I wanted to uh, but now I've got a whole box of new ones I might as well use new ones, you know it will give it a, a much better look if they're clean and shiny opposed to being restored. I like the idea of restoring the old ones but I can keep them as spares. Uh, so what we got in here, we have bearing bolts and they all look right, so that's good. Um, then we have some other miscellaneous ones that I half recognize. I'm not sure where that plate goes, but I'm sure at some point we will find it. Uh, a variation of washers, interesting. Well, this doesn't have everything you need, does it? Because it doesn't have exactly what I need in it. I feared this was going to be the case, but uh, whatever, we've got bolts now that are handy to have. They're the right ones. What I needed was these, which is a, you know, it's a domed head, uh, be eight mil thread, I think, and it should be an Allen head. Well, I thought it would include those. It doesn't. I've just noticed you don't have the ones for the subframe in here, which is fine because I don't need them, but the other ones I need, which is, again, another uh, domed allen but this one is shouldered and you can see this is one of the ones that i had to cut doesn't have those either as i say getting flanged bolts is not difficult uh, at all getting the exact ones with the, the shoulder and all of that dimensions correct is going to be harder uh, and i thought that was going to be a good solution but apparently not oh well when you first look at all this, you're like, oh my God, what is it all? But then when you actually pay attention to what goes where, you're like, okay, that makes sense because that's the electronics, you know. You've got the throttle cable coming down here and then you've got this breather coming off the top of here. You know, it all makes sense. But just to make my life easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put little pieces of tape around each one and say like um, top of engine and I'm going to leave that attached to that catch can. Um, just so I've got a kind of an idea of where they came from, left or right, I'll take a few more pictures. I just don't want to be in a position where I'm not sure where something goes. Or I route something wrong and you have to take half the bike apart to get it rerouted correctly. I also think though, as I see things I can take off easily, I'm going to do it. Like, as I say, this one's a prime example. I'll label up what, where this goes and then take that off and put it in the box and then see what's the next obvious thing. Uh, until we have less and less here and then it should be much more obvious how it all comes apart. Right, so I've done the first one to give you an idea of what I'm doing here. So the uh, the breather that comes off the top of the engine, uh, top engine breather to catch can uh, R, so I know it came from the right hand side. I know where it started, I know where it's going. I know this is a very simple bike, so I don't need to do it for something this simple, but it means in the future, if I do anything more complicated, I'm more practiced at doing it, which is why I'm doing it this way. While I'm doing this, um, there's a few things I want to talk about, sort of reply to some comments, some ideas and stuff that's been said. Do keep in mind, as I say, between filming and this going live on YouTube, there is quite a delay. So at least one or two episodes would have already been filmed by the time that I see your comment. Um, that's just the way it is. I've just loosened that off and there's another tube coming out the back and that's the one that goes to the airbox. So if I mark top of airbox on the other side, I'll know exactly where everything goes. And I know it's on the left hand side. Um, yeah, so things that people have suggested, just strip it down and get it powder coated. There is two problems with that. One is, well, coronavirus and places being closed and I don't really want to have this apart for that long. Um, maybe there's some places that are still open doing it, but I can't imagine there's many. The other issue, and it's, well, it's actually, maybe this is the bigger issue because if coronavirus didn't exist, it still wouldn't be happening, is cost. Um, 
I'm afraid I'm not a channel with 700,000 subscribers. I have 80,000 subscribers. I have 300 patrons, not 3,000. I'm not one of the channels that can, um, hang on. Okay, so I've just put on there, um, breather to airbox, left of shock, and then I know exactly the alignment as well. Right, what was I saying? Yeah, I'm afraid, guys, I don't have the budget, um, especially at the moment, because YouTube earnings are falling like a stone. All I'm saying is please don't hold the same expectations to me as you do for much larger channels as to what's going to get done here. The idea of doing it as restoration is you don't actually have to um, spend too much money. You're basically cleaning and renewing where you need to, opposed to doing like an overhaul. Yeah, I'd love to put some tricky bits on this. You know, I'd like to get some new bars for it. Um, be nice to get some frame protectors to go on this part. Be nice to get some engine case savers. Uh, just a few bits and pieces like that would be nice to get, but it's, it's all going to cost money, and that's not what this is about. This is about restoring. Now, I say, if I can work with a couple of companies, I have worked with companies in the past, I might want to get some mechanical bits, but I'm not sure I'm going to get any, um, you know, like, cosmetic bits. And top one comes off, and then this should come out. Just, just... There we go. To my understanding, this little thing is the catch can breather area. Basically any oil that gets uh, through the head, through everything, basically if it comes up, it comes down here into this box and returns the engine. Uh, and it also then vents off the air into the air box. I think it's just an oil catch can. The bolt for it needs to go back in it. Okay, so now we've got a breather open here and here, and I want to cover these up, so I've cut the finger out of a glove. Just going to push that down over it. Take a little tie wrap. And just cinch that down. And then it just stops uh, anything getting in there. It's a little condom for Derek. Right, I've labelled up this cable to the start mode, and so I've turned it into little flags, so I have a bit more space. Anyway, back to what I was saying earlier on about this sort of build, and not to expect things you get from like a channel of 700,000 subscribers. This is more realistic. I, I don't want to just, you know, strip it, have the frame painted by someone, and uh, then, you know, shove a load of expensive parts on it, because that's not quite realism for people at home in my opinion, unless you've got a lot of money to spend, in which case it's a lot of fun doing that. In fact, I did do that with my one two fives. But I like the idea of sort of spending as little as possible. That's kind of what this, this video, what this series is all about, is doing up this bike the best I can without spending much money. Which is why I'm trying to do everything myself rather than sending it off to get powder coated. What I think I'm going to be doing, because I have made some decisions now. I'm sure you've guessed by now, the fact that I'm taking stuff like this off and trying to get the electrics off. The engine is coming out. The reason the engine must come out is because the rust we have in places like this and the rust on the inside of the frame, like up in here, I can only really get to that with the engine out of the way. And at this point in time, we aren't even far from it being out anyway. Um... I sillily was like, oh, well, maybe I'll just drop the engine and leave it as a rolling frame and do it that way. Well, no, because the engine actually, the, the shaft that does the swing arm pivot, you know, the axle for it, that also goes through the back of the engine, which co that connects the frame, this and everything all into one through this central point. Uh, so this pin has to come out and then this will all fall apart, basically. Before I take the electrics out, I nearly forgot I need to take some pictures just so, again, just for reference, just to make my life easier. I will love myself in the future if I find that I can't work out something and I can look at a picture and find the answer. And this was something actually someone did mention. And it is a fair point, which is they said don't rely on camera phone pictures because when you come down to actually trying to use the pictures to find out where things went, you'll zoom in and you won't be able to see what went where, etc. I'm not using a camera phone. I'm using a digital SLR with a flash. I will be able to see where everything goes and I will be able to zoom into a high detail. As they say, I could shoot a picture of hummingbirds peepee -pee with this. That is actually a reference to something. Can anyone get the reference? To give you an example, you can see that label I've written out. That's the entire side of the engine. I can see everything with these pictures. But what you said, hang on, turn the light back on, about not relying on camera phone pictures was a very good point. Don't rely on camera phone pictures because they aren't actually that great. If you've got a decent camera, use it. A little compact shoot, something with at least 20 million pixels, something like that where you can actually zoom in. Uh, although my camera phone, to be fair, if, as long as it's exposed properly, would work fine. Whatever, this isn't a video about photography. <laughs> oh, something else I point out I've done recently. I went through my channel and I sorted out all my playlists 
and I added a load of videos to playlists. So now I have uh, the main playlists on my channel are, well, obviously uploads, which is everything, uh, motorcycle reviews, tips for new riders. There's one called mechanical, motorcycle mechanics and uh, workshop, and that's basically everything and anything from all the welding stuff I do to the bike work stuff I do, all that put together. Uh, the Metalworks playlist still exists, but you'll still find the Metalworks videos, most of them, in the um, workshop videos. I've kind of gone through and picked the ones that were most relevant. It just makes it easier for you guys to see videos that I've done. If you're particularly interested in like the workshop stuff, you can wa watch the workshop stuff. Or if you particularly want to watch the bike review stuff, you can watch just the bike reviews. It, I think it just makes it easier for you. If you've got a couple of hours you want to kill, you can just whack on one of those playlists. And uh, it should keep you entertained for a while, I hope. I just spent about 10 minutes arguing with this connector. <laughs> Basically like this, got to clip this side, top and this side. This one's easy to detach. These ones are more permanent. And you can, yeah, it was just very carefully trying to get it around, to get all three sides off at the same time. And each time you got one side like off, then the other side would clip back in and it's like, no! But it's got a, um, a water seal, you know, like a little silicon gasket in there. So to make sure that doesn't get lost or damaged, I'm going to put again a glove end over this. Oh. Right, I've just removed a load of the uh, the stock sort of zip ties, the reusable ones. Yeah, okay. That one which I've just disconnected is going to be staying on the bike because that's like a pickup off the bottom of the engine and I'm not going to remove that sensor unneedingly. So that can stay. Might as well take the CDI off at this point. That's the CDI. It's basically the brain of the bike. You obviously want to be very careful with that. <laughs> Detach from here. Obviously, this is all colour coded, so I shouldn't be able to get it wrong afterwards. And the the plugs are unique, but right. So that should now be most of the electrics. Yeah. Oh, we have. What's this? I've just found this, which has been taped off and this connector which has been taped off. So I'm like, okay, and I follow it down and it goes to this, which I think is a little solenoid, which is, and this is on the carbon. I think this is what stops the engine from getting full throttle to start with. Uh, do you remember I said about the other pipe being taken off? Cause there is another, there's also this, which has been blocked off at the top, which is from the carbon. And if you remember from my previous episode, I think that's to do with that throttle stop stroke um, reducer to reduce full throttle in first, second, third, like a mechanical anti-wheelie. Wait a minute, there's another one here which has been covered up. Is that how, that isn't how the rectifier relay plugged in because that normally went to, or well, maybe it is. No, it would be, wouldn't it? Is that how I take that? I don't know. I'm so confused at this point. As always, a massive thank you to my patron supporters. Uh, right now, YouTube earnings are falling through the floor. So without you, I would really be up the creek. So if you, are able to join Patreon, help with this build, you know, help support this channel. So little as a dollar a month, you get videos three days early, you get to be part of the Q and A's and stuff. It, I think it's a pretty fair deal. You know, I don't have all the tiers, the $5 tier, $10 tier, $15 tier, anything like that. It's just a buck a month to see the videos and it helps me make them. Without you, they wouldn't exist. So thank you. Now, so in theory now, the electrics, should just peel away. There you go, there's the electrics peeled off. Uh, the only thing that's stopping them getting any further out, as you can see, they're sort of rooted through the middle of here. This is something I really need to pay attention to. Uh, this is the rooting of this bit. But, so to get those out, the next thing is I'm gonna have to start detaching part of the cooling system. We've got things like this in the way. This is the overflow for the radiators that goes down through the middle of the bike. See, over the engine, down through there, and it eventually comes out round here, and it's held in place by a couple of these bendy clips. So it's a bit of a, a twisty route through the bike, so I'm really glad that I'm paying attention to stuff like that. Right, so then we've got these little rubber protectors which are zip-tied on. So just cut the zip ties. Pop those off. I 
Okay, I'm doing this more for myself for the future than anything, but the routing of the clutch cable is off the clutch cable, underneath the ignition, round the front of the headstock, underneath the steering lock, into the metal clip, as in pin on the side of the uh, frame, over the top of everything, down straight into where the clutch is, so and then the throttle side comes around through the little uh, wire cable guide, round the front of the headstock, round through the left hand side, <laughs> underneath the frame, back out to the right and then down to the carb. And that gives us our two way return and my god that carb looks grubby. As the next step is going to be dropping the oil, dropping the fluids basically out of the bike before I can get the rest of the cables off to get those cables off. I'm going to call this one an end here. Sorry if it's a little bit shorter than usual. Um, I have just spent, as it turned out, sorting the house out ended up being five days, six days. Because within you include everything that had to be done. And at the same time I was doing that, I was coming in here to spend a few hours working on this and then editing overnight before I was getting up the next day and getting on with the house more. So I'll be honest with you, I'm exhausted and I could really do with a nice easy one to get this edited tonight because then I've got the weekend with Reno. Oh, someone who did comment on the videos also who's done this to theirs said that they found quite a lot of rust underneath the engine, um, which is obviously a definite possibility and that's even more so why. We're gonna to have to get the engine. Rust wise, it's not actually as bad as I thought because what I thought was a really rough patch of rust on the underneath was actually welding slag. Or spatter, should we say. What I've been feeling under there is this. And if you can see, this is welding spatter that's just not been cleaned off, uh, has been painted over. That would come off with a wire wheel. That is really annoying. The Suzuki wouldn't clean that up on that part of the frame as well. It's like, it's annoying. But that's what I was feeling under this bit here. So actually that's quite good because it means the rust under here isn't nearly as bad. We're not that far off now. Um, as I'm not trying to rush these videos. I'm not trying to take massive leaps forward and forget what I'm doing. I'm taking this slowly, I'm doing it properly and I'm basically just enjoying the process. You know, I'm learning little bits about this bike because I've never stripped this bike down this far. I'm getting to see some things in practice and I'm building my confidence in doing this on something in the future maybe. Um, you know, I'm very apprehensive of this bike because this is Derek. This is this is my little baby. <laughs> if I got some little 125 wanted to do it up, stripping it down wouldn't be nearly as a concern as it would be with this. So that may be something we can do in the future, but of course that is fully dependent on how the channel goes and blah, blah, blah. We're not, let's not go into that. Don't worry, the more satisfying videos are going to come soon because obviously once I've got that drain, got the oil out, got those parts off, got the electrics off and dropped the engine, then it's going to be like going through and restoring bits, cleaning bits up. Um, looking over the frame, working out what I'm going to do with that exactly. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to uh, keep up with this series. And obviously, you're not too far into it yet. Go back to the beginning, catch up. Uh, massive thank you to my Patreon supporters as ever. Uh, if I can get a lot more people on board, you know, through Patreon, I can consider spending a bit more money, you know, like getting some new bars, getting some crash protectors, getting some bits and pieces, but some slightly nicer bits um, here and there just to customise it a little bit. But I don't expect that, so that's not the basis I'm working on. I'm working on restoration. Let's stop talking. Catch you next time. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to see future videos. This channel is made possible by the support of the audience. Please consider joining my Patreon to get early access to videos, questions answered in the monthly Q&A, your name on screen, and some exclusive content, all for as little as a dollar a month. You can also check out the links in the description to my merch, and other ways to directly support the channel. Thanks for watching.